you for showing up. We're gonna give just about 30 seconds so people can come on in and log in and have their audio working. We've got plenty of folks today. Great, thank you all for joining us today for UCCS in 15 minutes or less. My name is Eddie, I'm gonna be your host for today. So we're gonna go over a lot of content and I have put that content up here. So there you can see our schedule. While you're taking a look at that, I just have three important updates about the way that we use Zoom at UCCS. Um, so first of all, just note that if you have questions at any point throughout the webinar, we do have a Q&A function or a question and answer function. You can type your questions into there. You will also notice that we have a chat function. Please stay away from the chat function if you can. If we need to push something out to everyone, we will send it into chat and we want that to be as uncluttered as we can. So questions into the Q&A and then check the chat if we send something out um, that'll likely be from us. Then lastly, one of the first things we're gonna do is a virtual tour. So when I turn off my presentation, I'm gonna let Brad show his screen and get started. At that point, I encourage you all to switch to speaker view so that you can see the tour in full screen. So keep that in mind once I turn my presentation off. Before we get into all of that, I wanna give you all a brief insight into UCCS because some of you are pretty new to understanding what UCCS is all about. UCCS or the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs is located in Colorado Springs, you guessed it, and that's Olympic City, USA. We're just an hour south of Denver, so we're really, really close to the capital of Colorado, and we're really close to the great outdoors. So you can make a day trip and go out to the mountains, but if you don't want to do that, there's plenty to do right here in the springs, and we have some of the best views in the country. I may be biased, but I'm also right about that. UCCS has around 12,500 undergraduate students here. So our average class sizes get to be smaller. Brad will touch on that in a bit. So expect smaller classes where you get to know the folks around you and the professors know who you are. With that being said, UCCS is part of the CU system or the University of Colorado system. Having the backing of the system is super important because although you're gonna have very personal experiences here on the campus, when you go looking for research opportunities, internships and careers, you're gonna have the backing of the CU system and the community in finding any of those things. But enough from me, I'm gonna hand over control to Brad. So I'm gonna put them up on screen. If you wanna share or switch to speaker view now, now's a great time so that you can see them in full picture. So Abby, feel free to turn on your camera and we'll get started. Awesome, thanks Eddie. Welcome everyone to UCCS. Like Eddie mentioned briefly, my name is Brad. I'm a junior here studying mechanical engineering and I will be your guide to the awesome world of engineering. Right now though, we're starting off in a, a pretty mundane, but nonetheless important space. This is a classroom, as you might have guessed. And it is what's considered a pretty average classroom, both in terms of the physical layout, as well as the number of students that you would see here in this classroom. The average class size here at UCCS is 25 students. And so, this room gives you a pretty good sense for what you would see a lot in your lecture-based classes. But in engineering specifically, there's so much that we get to do outside of the classroom. So we're gonna head out and we're gonna go see some of that really cool stuff. So follow me. So the building that we're starting in today is called the Osborne Center for Science and Engineering. This building houses the departments for physics, biology, as well as mechanical engineering. So welcome to my home. What's really cool about Osborne is that while it is the largest academic building on campus, it only has seven classrooms. So most of the space here in Osborne is dedicated to labs. That's really the hands-on component that I was mentioning to you. And while we're here though, I'll show you the gem of Osborne. This is our pendulum. And as an art piece, it represents the union of the three subjects here, taught here in Osborne. But we don't care about physics or biology today. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna head upstairs and we're gonna start off by seeing some of the mechanical engineering facilities. We'll head right upstairs this way. So 
and there's a ground level entrance on every floor. We start on the second floor and we've now come up to the third floor. And the mechanical engineering facilities are here in the A wing of the third floor. It's a little bit confusing to hear, but it makes a lot more sense in person. We'll start by seeing some labs. Now, right off the bat, there's two really cool facilities right at the start of this hallway. On this side right here, the lights are off inside, unfortunately, so we can't see all the cool stuff inside. But this is the wind tunnel lab. Part of studying mechanical engineering is taking fluid mechanics. And so we have a lab section with that where we explore the interactions of various fluid systems, whether that be liquids or gases. That's part of what we get to use the wind tunnel for. I'm in that class right now. We just got started, so we're still in the water part of fluids, but I'm really looking forward to getting to test some airfoils in the wind tunnel. On the other side of the hall, this is actually more of a club lab space. One of the really cool student clubs here at UCCS is Mountain Lion Motorsports. Take a look inside. What they do here is our Mountain Lion Motorsports team, they, they design, build, test, and race electric go-karts. It's so cool. And they need students from like a lot of different major programs, from mechanical engineers from, to build the structures, electrical engineers to design the battery and control systems, to business majors to do all the marketing and promotion. So it's just one really great example of a lot of the collaborative research and activities that go on within the engineering department. We'll, go, we'll keep going though. We'll see some even more cool stuff. Now, unfortunately, the lights here in this lab are also still off, but I would be totally remiss if I didn't tell you what goes on here. This is the materials engineering lab. And so what we do in here is we break stuff for science, whether that be like pulling, smashing, freezing, heating. We take different materials and put them to their limits until they break and then see why they broke. It's really cool and it's really fun, admittedly. <laughs> There's some more this way. Oh, awesome. Lights are on There's a class, so we'll be oh. quiet. But right now, we're outside the mechatronics lab. Mechatronics is like electronics for mechanical engineers. And so in this lab facility here, mechanical engineering students get to learn and experiment with different types of circuits and electrical systems. There's even some more advanced classes that deal with robotics. So there's a lot of really cool opportunities for mechanical engineers in that crossover space with electrical engineering. Take a peek real quick. Pretty cool. One last engineering facility that I want to show you while we're here in Osborne is our machine shop. It looks like they're open, so we can go take a look inside. So we're not going to go too far inside because we don't have the safety equipment. But right now we're inside the UCCS machine shop. Mind to take a look around? Not at all. Awesome. Yeah, we're not running machines right now, so don't have safety glasses on, you guys. Just through your shoes is the only problem. So cool. Yeah, yeah we'll come to look around. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any questions about any of it? I think we got it. Right on. Yeah, I think you didn't see any of these rooms too. Right Thank on. you. Thank yeah. you. So. The machine shop here at UCS has a ton of awesome equipment ranging from lathes, mills, CNC, routers, welding, even additive manufacturing equipment like 3D printers as well. Now, this space isn't only for mechanical engineers. Students from any major program can take a class here in the machine shop to learn how to use all the different fabrication equipment. Because we have really cool facilities and we want to share them with everyone else. On the other side of the machine shop, we have another facility called the prototyping lab. That's where all those added manufacturing machines are that I've mentioned. 
and seniors in the mechanical engineering program here at UCCS. We take a big capstone project at the end of our pro at the end of our degree, where we actually work with a company in the real world, do a design project, where we actually make an awesome engineering bay. It, it's not the most technical word, but it's a pretty apt description. So from here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to cross over from Osborne, where we are right now, and we're going to go to the engineering building. So we'll start that walk now. Thank you. Oh, he's gone. The mechanical engineering students here at UCCS also do a lot of research. One of the coolest research projects that students are getting to work on right now is uh, one of our professors is trying to figure out how to 3D print rocket fuel. And it is just as cool as it sounds. <laughs> so there's a lot of really awesome opportunities for mechanical engineers, as well as like any other engineer to get great professional experience before they graduate. Right outside. As Abby and Brad are walking outside, I want you all to know that we're gonna lose them for just a second and the audio quality isn't great because there's wind. But I wanna take a moment to encourage you all, if you're liking what you're seeing and you wanna see more of the campus, just know that our on-campus tours are currently available. That's something that you can sign up for through our website. So if you wanna to go to uccs.edu and type in tours at the top right in the search bar, you can actually register for a tour or if you wanna see these facilities at your own pace, we also have virtual re re uh, references so that you can take a look at these buildings um, um, on your computer, but we're about to pick Abby and Brad back up, so I'll let them take the show again. Awesome. Thanks, Eddie. So we now cross outside through a little bit brief alley, and we've come into now the engineering building. This building houses departments for computer science, electrical engineering, as well as math. As we come in onto the main floor to walk by, this is pretty much more classrooms in this particular section of the engineering building on this floor. But actually, right above us is a facility known as the Math Excel Center. The Math Excel Center is a free tutoring space for students to get help in math subjects. And that ranges all the way from, you know, college algebra to differential equations, and everything in between. The staff at the Excel Center has actually been really adaptable in changing to the needs of students during the pandemic. And so they have very extensive online hours. So even if you're not on campus, you can still get all the help that you need in that. Awesome. Let's come around this way a little bit, entering the big open area. Now this particular section of the engineering building has a lot of the research facilities for computer science. One right here is the LINK Lab. That stands for Language, Information, and Computation. They do a lot of work with machine learning and making helping that interface with more traditional unorganic written languages. They even do work with genetic coding here, which is pretty cool. If you walk this way, Well, first of all, there's a cool art piece I want to point out. I don't know how clear it is on the camera, but this is a map of the surface of Mars that they've kind of constructed topographically. It's pretty cool. But just on the other side of Mars is another really awesome computer science lab called the VAST Lab. VAST stands for Vision and Security Technology. They do even more work with artificial intelligence and machine learning but they interface that into virtual reality, photo and facial recognition. So uh, they're mostly computers, so they're not quite as cool to see online. What is cool to see though, are the electrical engineering labs right over here. So as we're walking down the hallway, 
a lot of people first notice the really big orange and green tube here. In, and that's actually a test track for the UCCS Hyperloop Train Design Competition team. It's a group of students who are working to design a Hyperloop Train prototype. And they compete in the competition. And this is the track that they use to test their designs. Now, but on the other side of the hall, right over here, these are our clean rooms. And as the name would suggest, they are clean rooms. Now, they're not actually yellow on the inside. The glass is just tinted. But here, students studying electrical engineering can get experience in designing and fabricating computer chips onto silicone wafers. You can actually see some of the silicone wafers here in these little buckets here. They look like little metal cookies. But through the use of extensive chemical and physical processes, students get to make those into real computer chips and then design them. So it's even more than hands-on experience in kind of like no matter what <laughs> major program students decide to pursue in engineering. Unfortunately, there's no people in the lab today. So I think it's so funny to see them inside where they've got um, all their big clean suits. They have gloves, hair nets, and they actually have to do that to keep the clean room clean. Here at UCCS, our clean room is a level 100. And so what that means is for every cubic foot of air, there's only a hundred particles in the air, which might sound arbitrary, but suffice to say, it's very clean. Now, what I think is the coolest facility in it, the engineering building where we are now is the Anecho Chamber. I'm sorry, that might be a little bit anticlimactic, but it is really cool, even when the lights are off. It's a giant two story box that has a bunch of foam spikes on the inside, and they use it to test communications signals equipment. Now, on the inside, all those foam spikes they inhibit echoes. So you step inside and all that goes are gone. It's also insulated from electromagnetic radiation. So those students that are doing design and research, they get to get really pure signals when they're testing their communications and signals. I highly recommend that if you get the chance to come on campus, please do. There's so much to see, even when doors are locked and lights are closed. It's hard to get a good feel for just how awesome this all these spaces are from online. But I hope I've been able to give you a little bit of an insight. I hope you've enjoyed my tour. Thank you so much, Brad and Abby, for the tour. That's wonderful. And folks, I know that you've been submitting some questions. That's great. Feel free to keep it up. Next, I'm going to hand over controls to Sue McLernan. Um, she's going to talk a little bit about academic information as it relates to engineering. So she's going to take a moment here and share her screen, and then she's got the next 15 minutes. Hey there, I'm just trying to get the right screen shared here. Just give me a second to do that. Hopefully we're on screen too. And I didn't want to do um, any kind of a slideshow, but I was asked to share certain things. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I hope you don't mind. I'll go really, really fast so that we can um, talk because I'd really rather just have a conversation. So my name is Sue McLaren I'm the Career and Industry Outreach Program Director. So I work with all of our employers and everybody who wants to hire our students for internships, jobs and research and to connect to the college. And then on the other side, I work with students to make sure that you are prepared to meet with companies and get those internships. So on both sides, I'm working with students and employers to bring you together. So hopefully that's helpful for you to know that there's a person that does that in the college. I'm going to focus really briefly on why would you choose us and then why would you choose something particular in engineering because I think when a lot of students come into engineering they're not sure what to pick and so I just wanted to give a brief little talk about how you choose and what what are the options that are out there. So what is engineering and computer science? This is an absolutely ridiculous um, description of engineering and computer science from one of our friends at Keysight. So this is very complicated and it sounds very high level. And when I read that, I just think, what? Like, that's not good. So I really would rather talk about like something that's, that's meaningful that everybody could understand. So here's a battery electric vehicle. And here are all of the things that are related to engineering on this 
vehicle. And it relates to all of our degrees um, in that this one vehicle has everything engineering that you could think of in it and computer science. So there are physical systems, which are the design of like the tires, the wheels, the brakes, the actual physical body and things like that. There's how the gasoline works. There's electric motors, there's controllers and sensors. And all of those things are different aspects of engineering, either computer science, electrical engineering, or mechanical and aerospace engineering. So this uh, graphic, is showing a couple of things. So I wanted to show the first three things right here. These are our three departments, mechanical and aerospace engineering, electrical engineering, and computer science. And these are the things that someone might do in these different areas. So in mechanical and aerospace engineering, you are focused as a student and as a professional on the physical aspects of things. So mechanics, materials, design, fluid mechanics, thermal mechanics, heat and transfer things, and machine design. You just spent a lot of time in the, in the tour looking in the mechanical and in, in, um, aerospace engineering area. Uh, and we have a lot of students in that area as well. Electrical engineering is probably a small section that, that we have of students. So electrical engineers are electromagnetics, um, power electronics, microprocessors, communication, digital signal processing, which you might do in the anechoic chamber, which was just um, shown on the tour as well. Um, and those students might also be doing a little bit of embedded stuff. So when you have like a smartwatch where it has software and hardware coming together, that would be them as well. And then we have computer science. I'm sure everybody knows what computer science is. But computer science also includes cybersecurity and game design. I wanted to talk about that. And then here's two other things that we have in the college as well. Computer engineering is the 50-50 combination of electrical engineering and computer science. It is the internet of things. It is an Alexa device. It is all kinds of things that have a physical device and computing associated with it. And then down here at the bottom is data analytics and systems engineering. That is a new degree area for us, but it's also something that I don't think a lot of people understand. So data analytics, big data, what's going on, how can we interpret that? Systems engineering, though, is taking that big data and applying simulation and modeling and testing to integrate systems. And the best description I can think of for a systems engineering project would be the cockpit of a jet airplane. All of those systems, which are physical switches and dials and things and communications and wires and then people and human interaction all need to be integrated and they all need to work. That system is systems engineering. So what's the difference between our degrees? We have three types of degrees in the College of Engineering and Applied Science. We have BS, BI, and BA. BS is Bachelor of Science. It would be the industry standard for a degree in engineering. All of our Bachelor of Science degrees are ABET accredited, which means we are teaching you what you need to know to go out into industry um, as determined by our accrediting agency. Um, the Bachelor of Innovation is um, a technical core, so you get your engineering stuff, and then you're also getting a business and innovation core with that. So two cores put together. In order to do that, we've taken away some of the other courses that you might take. Um, it is team-based. It's entrepreneurial. Some of those degrees are ABET accredited. It depends on the degree. And then the Bachelor of Arts is our latest degree. We're ex really excited to bring this. It has expanded admission standards. If you aren't a fan of math, um, it teaches math through statistics and um, it is industry focused and it's focused on software development so that you can get in, get your degree and get out into the world of work as quickly as possible. Um, here is the comparison of the degrees because I just gave you information and it's a little hard to take that in, but here's a visual. So right here, if you look at the Bachelor of Science is gold, the Bachelor of Innovation is gray, and the Bachelor of Arts is blue. And if you look at the first set of, of things, those, those three, the core, what you're getting in engineering, computer science is almost equal for all three of those degrees. So not a lot of difference. Uh, in the second set of bars, you can see that only the Bachelor of Innovation has curriculum in innovation and business. And then the last three are the ones I want to focus on. So math. Math is a big deal for engineers and computer scientists. And the amount of math that you would get is sort of highlighted here. In the Bachelor of Science, traditional theoretical based degree, most math, highest levels of math. The other two have less math. Not that you don't get any, but you just don't go to those highest levels of math. Science, the same thing. Bachelor of Science has the most science and then the other 
filter off a little bit. And then, but if you look at, there isn't zero science in the Bachelor of Arts. There's some, it just isn't quite on the grid there. And then the benefit of that Bachelor of Arts is right there in that last one. So there's some electives in the other two degrees, but because we're putting so much content in there so that you're prepared for the world of work, um, there are fewer electives. But that Bachelor of Arts, there's a lot of room in there for transfer students, for other uh, transfer credits, um, and for other options. So minors and things you might want to pursue separately. Um, our department majors, I've split here a little bit. Some of these are tracks and some of these are degrees, but I just wanted to quickly go over what we've got. So in computer science, we have basic computer science, cybersecurity, game design and development, artificial intelligence and machine learning. We offer those degrees in particular and those focus area and tracks because we have depth in those at UCCS. We have a new cybersecurity building that's opening up really quickly. So that is in this fall, we'll have a brand new cybersecurity building. We are an academic center of excellence in cybersecurity. And so there's a lot of depth in cybersecurity. In AI and machine learning, there's a lot of research depth in that. Game design and development, we have dedicated people for that. And then computer science, and that is either the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, which is everything computer science. But in the, the Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science, you can pick one of these tracks or you can pick and choose and make your own track in the general computer science track. Electrical and computer engineering, here's what we have. We have electrical engineering, co computer engineering, and this is where that data analytics and systems engineering degree sits. It is pulling together a lot of different areas, computer science, analytics, and systems engineering. And it's got a little bit of everything in there to make that systems engineering piece work. So you have a little bit of electrical, a little bit of mechanical, and then the data analytics, and that's what makes that integration engineering work. Um, and then mechanical is mechanical engineering. We have an aerospace minor right now, and we are looking to create an aerospace major here at UCCS. Here are the minors that are typical of our students within. You cannot take a minor in something that you're already majoring in, but here are all the, the minors. If you're in the um, Bachelor of Science degree program, you might want to also have a minor in math or physics, just because you're taking a lot of math and physics science-based courses anyway. Um, here are some opportunities that um, I'll focus on. So obviously I'm in the career area. So we have clubs, professional clubs, competitive clubs, and casual clubs. If you don't see a club you like, you can just create your own. Uh, we have a career focus in our in our college as a whole. We have credit and non-credit internships. There's a career office in the college. That's what I head up. Uh, we have industry engagement, lots of industry engagement. We want you to meet with companies and work with companies before you graduate. We have skills development. Many of the programs have senior design projects so that you're working on a real problem for a real company before you graduate. We want you to have that experience. Uh, research opportunities, you can have be a paid researcher for someone else, like one of our faculty members. Uh, we also hire part-time student workers within the college. You can learn from research faculty. And we also have independent research funds available for students, undergrad students, to take on their own research projects over the summer if they'd like to, and you have to apply for that program. And then infrastructure, we have learning labs, research labs. You've seen a bunch of them. There's not even enough airtime to show all of the buildings in like the 15 minutes. Uh, we have new buildings coming um, and we host uh, virtual machines and also we will host software for you. So if you need a particular type of software to do your research or your work or your class, uh, we have that available for you. So we try to give you everything that you need. Um, and why would you want to come here to UCCS? Uh, we're undergraduate focused. We have regionally relevant um, degrees. We have high workforce demand where we are here in Colorado Springs. We're not too big. We're not too small. We're still growing. Um, also, we have as, as was mentioned before, the Excel Center for Math is right in the College of Engineering and Applied Science. We want it to be here. We want it to be available for you. Uh, we think we have quality students, faculty and staff. We are all here to help you be successful um, as you go through your academic um, classes and then as you move out into the world of work. Uh, the career office is here to help you. That's what I do. That's what I focus on every single day. And of course, uh, there are scholarships available that are specific to engineering and engineering students. And that was the fastest overview ever. I would love to answer some questions. If some came in, just let me know. Thank you so much, Sue, for that information. Um, we do have a couple of questions I'd love for you to answer. I know that you're mm -hmm. really in tune with kind of the career path for engineering mm -hmm. students and how to prepare. We had a question come in about 
what are some of the job opportunities that open up to UCCS grads? Like, um, are there any particular places you know of that UCCS students have gone on to work at? Well, there's tons <laughs> because every student has a different pathway. Uh, so we in Colorado Springs have um, the defense industry is quite large here. So we have many, many students who go into the defense industry, whether it's missile defense, uh, working in civilian service or uh, working in the aerospace industry. So you can imagine the biggest names there. They're here in Colorado. We have a gigantic aerospace um, economy here in Colorado. So we have lots and lots of students in those areas. We have a very large IT um, and cybersecurity startup community here in Colorado Springs. So lots of our students who are doing cyber go off into either startups or established companies. So there's a great need for that um, in terms of future workforce. And then everything else is just everything else. It's everybody. It's working in the electronics industry. It's working, you know, we are um, um, USA, we have all the USA um, organizing committees are here. And so we have a lot of nonprofit work for students. And a lot of that work is IT because they're tracking students and, uh, or not students, um, athletes and statistics and things like that. So there's a lot of work in the sports industry. And then we, so we have aerospace and defense, IT and cybersecurity. And then we have sort of a medical and manufacturing sort of set of two things that kind of come together. So within Colorado Springs in our very local region, those are the biggest uh, players uh, who hire our students. But for students who wanna go anywhere, we have students who work uh, at some large corporations all over the nation in all industries, including like Google and SpaceX and those kind of places like that. I will say, if I can add on to that one just a little bit, Eddie, is that students who intern, who take an internship somewhere, have a, a much better chance of getting an offer from the company where they intern. So I highly encourage students, if it's feasible for you, and if, if you are a match for the company, to try for an internship. And our intern companies... Um, look for students earlier and earlier in their academic career. So students who are inter interested in computer science get a little more into their career field early on. And so they sometimes have internships after they finish their, their freshman year or their sophomore year. Other areas like electrical engineering is that more traditional junior year um, internship opportunity. And then we want you to get into your career quickly. So every freshman student coming in takes an introductory course in their their career area uh, so that they get um, hands-on experience before they, they, you know, we don't want you to come in and not know anything about electrical engineering for two years. So we start you off right away into an experiential learning class. And thank you so much for expanding on what you originally said, because that addresses some of the other questions we've been seeing. So thank you so much, Sue. Mm -hmm. um, super appreciate your time here. Feel free to stick around. If we have some other questions, I might throw them at you if you're still around. So thank you so much for your help, Sue. You bet. Thank you. And then now we're actually going to transition over to hearing from some students and their student experience, whether it's related to engineering or at UCCS as a whole. So um, all of my students who are here, can you turn on your cameras and microphones so that I can see you? And then folks uh, watching at home, if you want to switch to gallery view, you'll actually be able to see all of us with our cameras on. So thank you all for joining me today. I really appreciate you all taking time to meet with me. I've got a couple of questions for you all and students as you're watching this, feel free to send questions through the Q&A. But I wanna start with an introduction. So if y'all wanna start with your name, your major, your year at UCCS, and then if you have any special involvements or things you really love about UCCS. So um, why don't we start, whoever wants to take it away. Let's go alphabetical order, so Abby. Awesome, um, so my name is Abby Feichert. I'm a senior this year at UCCS. Uh, my major is exercise science with a minor in pre-physical therapy. So I'm going on to PT school after this. Um, and then my favorite part about UCCS is probably just all, um, all the hands-on experiences I've gotten to have um, through my major mainly. And then just the views and the size of the school really contributed to um, my like, liking of the school as well. So. And then moving on in alphabetical order, Brad, if you want to take it away. For sure. Thanks, Eddie. So hello, my name is Brad. You might recognize me from the tour. <laughs> uh, once again, I'm a junior studying so mechanical engineering. I'm from Colorado Springs. And what were the other questions, Eddie? Yeah. Um, 
tell us about any involvements that you have with UCCS, uh, any special things or maybe your favorite thing about UCCS. Oh yeah, for sure. So I work on campus as a tour guide, but then I'm also involved in a couple of scholarship programs, including the chancellor's leadership class. And I'm also a member of the American Institute of Aeronautical and Astronautical Engineering, which is basically like the, uh, <laughs> the, the aerospace engineering club on campus. Cool, and then passing on the mic. Hi, so I'm Kobe Hansen. I'm a junior over at UCCS studying electrical engineering. Um, I actually grew up in Africa, so it was kind of like a different perspective for me, but I love it a lot. And I'm going to say they stole all the good answers, but it's <laughs> it's worthy of reiterating. Um, I love the views out here because, you know, going to school, the monotony kind of gets to you in a way. So just finding a place to, you know, go hike or just sit down, garden of the gods, or even at the rec center, and just look at the oversight of the city is kind of amazing. And I would say everybody out here is pretty friendly. So those are the best things for me. And I just wanted to say that. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank and then you. I want to open up with another question here. So do you all find it easy to connect with faculty and staff? Are there any particular like faculty that you get along with really well? Or how, how's the relationship in the classroom? And we'll go backwards this time. So Kobe, if you want to take it away first. Um, and I'll say that's one of the best things that I like about this school too is like the class sizes it's not too small it's not too big so you could always get help from maybe your peers and if they're not available or if they don't know it right you could connect with a lot of the professors so I'll say I've had I've had a lot of help with that regard and also I am military so I kind of have like that extra you know setback of not being in class sometimes and I feel like it's going to be the same thing for some student athletes as well but all the resources are there if you need help you can reach out to them and they can help you communicate with the teachers. And I've had teachers put in overtime for me specifically and helping me get caught up with the material and even giving me extra guidance in my college career. So that's Thank you so much. And then Brad or Abby, anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, Kobe talked about like how accessible the professors are especially, but I think there's a lot of other really great resources for students. Back on the tour, I mentioned the Math Excel Center, but there's also some smaller affiliate Excel centers. There's one for like electrical engineering, and then there's a whole nother one for mechanical engineering. The tutors in there, they've all taken the classes that I'm taking. So they're really capable in giving very like specialized and personal feedback for that, the help that I need. Perfect. And oh, sorry, Abby, you had something to share? Yeah, um, I just wanted to kind of touch on what Kobe had said. Um, I actually am an athlete, so I am on the UCS women's basketball team. And so I kind of know from firsthand experience that the professors really do work with you. So if any of you guys are planning on being athletes, um, they work really closely with their athletes to make up quizzes or tests or anything like that if you're away, like on a trip and stuff like that. Um, and me being more of a health sciences major, um, rather than engineering, I can speak on that aspect a little. I've gotten to know so many of my professors and I found that they're actually more apt to help you if you wanna to talk to them. So if you go to them and ask for help or really try and just form that relationship, then they're so much more likely to help you. And um, I've formed a lot of great relationships just through um, doing that. And then also for letters of recommendation, um, been helped a ton just by like forming those relationships. So if you need those letters of rec, recommend that. Awesome. And then what I wanted to ask as well is, have any of you taken any internship opportunities or have any been presented to you like through your major? Um, can you talk about like what it looks like, even if you haven't done one, like if you know what it might look like for students, if you can speak to that and you guys can go whoever wants to go first on that. I can go. Um, so I'm, it's not really an internship, but some of the hands-on things I'm doing actually right now is for my major, you have to do it's called the senior seminar. And so in order to graduate, you have to take this class. And so mine is creating a personal training program for an actual client and working with them twice a week and kind of going in and 
um, making that connection with them and also prescribing them exercise. So it's really hands-on, really in person um, and stuff. So that's my real, uh, you know, internship opportunity that I've really enjoyed. So. Yeah, I mean, so pretty similarly, I haven't had an internship yet. I do have one lined up this summer, um, hopefully with, with NORAD. I, I'm not sure what I'll be doing yet because I'm still waiting on the security clearance to go through. But I know a couple, like some of my professors have offered that if I was interested and I had the availability, I could join their research or TA for a class that I had taken. And so, I mean, if you're really, if you're forming those, those connections with your professors, like we've kind of mentioned, then there's a lot of opportunities that can come from them as well as your own initiative. And I'm gonna speak personally. I just secured an internship last summer for um, over at Lockheed Martin. It was something that I never really considered, but just seeing everybody else do it, and which is great about the community over at UCCS, it kind of inspired me to do the same thing that they were doing. But I didn't know how to leverage my positions and the things that I had done to get there. And that's when I met Sue McQuernan, who just gave the research, I mean, the presentation. And she walked me through, helped me get my resume right and everything. And I landed one over at Lockheed Space up in Denver. So I, I did that for the past summer and I'm gonna be doing it again, but in a new team because you know you, you never wanna get stagnant. And outside of that, I got, I got a couple other offers when I applied for them, but I felt like this was the best thing for me because of my love for air, airplanes and for space. And very recently we landed in Mars and it was kind of fulfilling, but I'll say I've seen a lot of people do great things over at UCCS with internships and the opportunities are endless if that's what you want to do. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you all. It's very helpful. And then I want to touch a little bit on like the student side of things with like time management and such. I know that you all have commitments outside of the classroom with internships and such. Do you have any tips that you would pass on to students about time management or how to handle kind of moving into the college experience and kind of juggling new things and responsibilities? I can kick us off. So college is structured like a, quite a bit differently from high school. I mean, because when I was in high school, I'd have homework assigned every day and it was due the next day but it's not usually like that in college because most of the classes are kind of spread out like maybe they happen just twice a week and so you end up with like so a lot of time that you're not in the classroom but it's difficult to decide how to spend that time and so it might be tempting to say oh well i don't have any homework to do until friday but if you have you know like three different things do on Friday, it's really important to get started on that earlier and start taking them out over the course of the week so that by then on Friday, you're not rushing to get something turned in at midnight. That was pretty comprehensive. Abby or Kobe, do you have anything to share about that? Um, my tip is to get a planner, <laughs> get a planner or use Google calendar or something where you can put like all of your, all of your stuff in it. Cause having everything in one place was like super crucial. Um, at least for me, cause you know, like us doing this, being Clyde's guides, like that's our, that's our job. And then being an athlete and then being, um, a student as well. So it's just a lot of different layers. And so having all those different layers in one place, is really beneficial to like balance your schedule and time and like uh, know what you got to do that day. So do that. I say all those are hundred percent. And to add, to add on to that, I'll, I'll say you have to slow down and speed up. And what I mean by that is you have to take time off. First of all, you have to hold yourself accountable, like they said, and do what you have to do when you do it. And I, for me personally, I found out that the calendar is very helpful for that. But outside of that, when it gets stressful, you just have to take a break, take some time off, go into the mountains, go hide recently. And it was kind of, it was kind of new for me. And it was scary at first, but it's like, wow, that's such a new experience. I'll be doing cryotherapy like next week. And 
it's all these new experiences that if, especially if you're not in Colorado, it's something that you definitely want to go for. So slow down to speed up for sure. Awesome advice. Thank you all so much for your help with this. Super appreciate it. Um, that's going to be it for this section here. So again, super appreciate your help with this. Um, I see that Sue is still on the call and I actually got a question for her. So the rest of you are totally good to go. Thank you so much for your help here. And then Sue, if you're still around, I've got a question for you. Um, it looks like some students want to know about um, aerospace engineering and like potentially that becoming a, mi a major. Could you speak to that um, in any way? A little bit, yeah. We're exploring that possibility right now and just starting the process. So as you know, academia sometimes takes a long time to get through things. So we're at the beginning of that process, but we're really excited about it. Uh, we uh, will probably be focusing on astro uh, as opposed to aero. So aero and astro uh, as opposed to some of the other things that somebody might be. And the reason for that is just that is prevalent in our hiring area with the, in the defense industry. Um, I also wanted to mention, Kabi is, um, Kabi works for me occasionally, uh, working on certain projects. So he works for the Engineering and Applied Science College, has our own IT department, and we do our own programming for internal and external um, customers. So he works in that department as well. So that's another way for students to get uh, experience is to work inside the college. Awesome. And thank you for that, because that addresses another question we had. So thank you again, Sue, for your contribution. Cool, so we're gonna move on to our last uh, portion of today. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my presentation here and then I will share my screen. Cool, we've got a couple of slides to skip through because we've been running really much on time. Today, I wanna talk about once you've been admitted to UCCS, what you should be doing next. And I understand that some folks in the audience may not have yet been accepted to UCCS or may not have even yet applied. So this is really for our admitted students who have already applied and been admitted. The rest of you are more than welcome to stay on, but this is gonna talk about next steps moving from there. We're gonna talk about a few things today. Number one is claiming your account. We're gonna talk about completing the FAFSA, the housing application, have a quick scholarship reminder. And then last but not least, we're gonna talk about orientation. That's one of the biggest steps to prepare you to come into UCCS. So let's get started. Number one, if you're admitted to UCCS, you will have received by email and by mail, a UCCS admissions letter welcoming you to the UCCS Mountain Line family. And this is really, really important for a couple of reasons. Um, you're obviously gonna have your name and stuff. It's not gonna be blocked out like this, but make note of all of the information that's on here because you'll find your student ID number or what we refer to as SID. And then you'll also have a really important link down here under 2A um, where you can visit accounts.uccs.edu to claim your student account. And that's gonna be the first thing that I want you all to do once you've received this or if you already have but haven't claimed your account, that's step number one. Once you navigate to that page, you're gonna be able to claim your account right here under your UCCS account options. Really easy to do, it really comes down to merging your name and your student ID number. And through the process of claiming your account, you'll also be able to access resources like the UCCS portal, your UCCS email and more. So it's a really critical step in the process. Make sure to have your student ID number somewhere handy. You'll use it a lot more than you think you do. And especially in these steps getting started, really important to take note of. So go ahead and claim your account if you haven't done so already. Next, apply for housing. It's really important that you all do this, especially if you're a first year student who doesn't live in Colorado, you will be living on our on campus housing. So reaching out to residence life and housing and finding somewhere to live on our campus is really, really important. So the application process for housing is completely online. What you want to do before you get engaged with this is to claim your account, obviously, um, but you'll go to uccs.edu slash residence, and that'll take you to our UCCS Residence Life and Housing Department, and then from there you'll be able to access the application. The priority deadline for housing is March 15th, so that date is rapidly approaching. We've got, what, five days from here? So make sure to try and get everything done by March 15th as far as it goes to housing um, because you want to meet that application priority deadline. If you meet that deadline, there's a greater chance that you will get the option that you most prefer when it comes to UCCS housing. 
As you're filling out that application, you're going to see this page here. Um, it'll give you all the important information. It's its own portal where you'll be able to go in, um, put in all your information, your preferences, all that good stuff. So this is what the UCCS housing portal looks like. Again, there's the link. Reminder to claim your account. If you forget, you can actually claim your account through this page here. They have a link to take you there too. And then another thing to note is that the housing application does include a housing deposit. That deposit comes out to $600 of a deposit um, that you will submit for your housing application. And I've broken down what that looks like. The first $100 of the application fee, um, that's non-refundable. But then you also have a $200 security deposit and a $300 prepayment. So all that together makes up the $600. $500 of that deposit if, is refundable, but you must withdraw your application before May 31st. So again, $600 deposit now. If you don't end up coming to UCCS and living on housing, you can get 500 bucks of those back. So that's the way that the process looks as far as the housing application. You can expect to begin hearing back by mid-spring, so we're getting there soon. Roommate information is going to be released in early summer. So if you were pairing up with some roommates or maybe you didn't request anyone in particular, you'll find out more about your roommates as we get closer to summer. And then I also want to talk about FAFSA because completing your FAFSA is really, really important. Some of you may have heard of a priority date. So I'm going to talk about FAFSA and why it's important to do regardless of if you've submitted yet or not. So like I mentioned, there's still time to complete the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or FAFSA. If you don't know where to access the FAFSA forms, you can find the FAFSA forms on our financial aid office's website, which is finaid.uccs.edu. You may have heard that March 1st was the FAFSA priority date. So if you filed your FAFSA before March 1st, you actually have met that priority date. But if you didn't meet that date, you can still and should still submit the FAFSA. And you can use the school code there, that's 004509, that will also be listed on the um, financial aid website. Um, one of the last things I want to say about FAFSA is that you can file up to 10 schools at a time. So if you're still not sure about where you want to go, if that's the thing holding you back from doing the FAFSA, don't let it be the thing holding you back. Put all the school codes in. Um, the FAFSA relies on a few key components to determine what kind of aid you will get. Um, so number one, they're going to take into consideration the FAFSA completion date. So again, if you beat that priority date, that's good. If not, you still qualify for FAFSA, but understand that that priority date does play a factor. Um, they're also going to look at your expected fam family contribution or your EFC and then cost of attendance. Cost of attendance is big because depending on where you go to college, the cost of being there is going to be different, which means your financial aid award may be different. So keep that in mind. They're also going to consider your residency status. So if you're in state or out of state, and then also the amount of coursework you plan to be taking. So whether you're full-time or part-time enrolled at UCCS or anywhere else. You'll be hearing back. Typically, students started hearing back towards the end of February, which is the last month. Emails are going out to students and parents. So if you didn't see anything, ask your parents. If your parents didn't see anything, check your inbox. But it can take up to three weeks to process your FAFSA information. So if you submitted your FAFSA literally yesterday, you're going to have a little bit of waiting to do before we get back to you. And we go back in batches. So you will hear back from us. And if you have any questions on if you're missing anything or if you need assistance, we do have a financial aid office that assists with all those things. I'll put their contact info up here in just a little bit. As we talk financial aid, I also just want to mention two terms that you likely hear very often when you talk about financial aid, and that's loans versus grants. Now, if you filed before the priority date, it's more likely that you'll receive grants. Those are superior. Those are free money. Those are monies that you don't need to pay back. That's basically just paying you to go to college, and it's a flat amount of money going to you so that you can cover the cost of tuition. That's different from loans where um, loans typically have interest rates. So you think of like buying a car, you have to pay the loan back. That's how those will work. And so if you have questions about what you're receiving or the way it breaks down, again, you can always reach out to our financial aid office. Um, so if you have those questions, our financial aid and scholarship office is happy to answer those. You can give them a call or email them. And then further, if you have questions about scholarships, the same office handles questions about scholarships. So you can also reach out to them there. I'll leave that on screen for just another second. Okay, now changing gears, I mentioned I wanted to state a very quick scholarship reminder. Um, this year with COVID, 
now that it's been like a full year since COVID has been around and we've been sort of on lockdown is we've noticed that a lot of students haven't been able to complete ACT or SAT scores. And that's been really impactful to some students. You can still get admitted to UCCS without those test scores, but there is a different process for students who haven't been able to submit those test scores when they're looking at scholarships. In particular, I want to talk about two automatic scholarships, that is scholarships that we award automatically based on the information that we have about you and the way that some students will approach receiving these scholarships because there's still time to apply for them. First, I'm going to talk about the Chancellor's Award and then we'll dive into the Peak Award. So the Chancellor's Award is for Colorado residents, so students who live in Colorado. That award is $10,000 over four years. Now, typically, we're looking at GPA and test scores. If you submitted your high school transcripts and test scores when you applied to UCCS, we're already automatically considering you for this award. But if you're a student who couldn't submit test scores, we've already looked at your GPA and the rigor of your coursework, and we've determined if you are a good fit for the Chancellor's Award, and we've gone ahead and sent you an email to get some further information from you so that we can see if you're going to be a finalist for the Chancellor's Award. So check your email if you haven't done so already. If you believe that you've got that 3.0 GPA, but you weren't able to send in test scores, check your inbox and respond to us. Same goes for the Peak Award. The Peak Award is just for non-resident students who aren't coming from a Western undergraduate exchange state. The only difference here is the amount of money received, but the process is exactly the same. We're looking at the same criteria. Again, if you weren't able to send test scores to us, check your inbox. If you're eligible for this award, we sent you an email with the application. That application has a unique URL for you. Go ahead and fill out that page. I would recommend doing it in one sitting. Don't let that page time out. It's a really, really easy process. It doesn't involve sending in an essay or letters of recommendation. So just fill out that page and you will be considered for those, those awards. So quick reminder on those. And then lastly, and like I mentioned, not least, is orientation. The next big step that you have in front of you before getting to UCCS is orientation. You can register for orientation at orientation.uccs.edu. That's their webpage. And uh, you can get started with those, or those registrations now. Um, so they are available um, as we speak. Here's how orientation will work this year. There's um, three steps that all students will take with orientation, and there's two optional steps that you can do if you're interested but don't need to. Step one, sign up for orientation. Um, once you sign up for, for orientation, you're going to get an email giving you immediate access to virtual welcome resources. That's going to be recorded videos and resources to get you acquainted with UCCS. They're also going to send you an orientation checklist, which you can actually view on their website. That's going to list all the information I'm talking about now. So if you want it later, go ahead and apply or register for orientation. Step two is going to be signing up for a class registration appointment. You need to have registered for orientation before you get the email for step two. So do that first. On March 15th, which is a Monday, we're going to be sending out an email to all registered students to orientation. That email will allow you to schedule a one-to-one -one virtual peer appointment with an orientation welcome leader. They're gonna help you get enrolled for courses. So it's a really exciting time. We're not gonna let you do it alone. You have support and you're gonna have it in the form of your orientation welcome leader. The fun thing is you get to choose your orientation welcome leader. So if you're an engineering student, which is probably why you're here, you can choose an engineering orientation welcome leader and they can help give you more insight into their college experience and they can help you with all the steps to get prepared for coming for your first semester. And then step three, that's the actual appointment. So you're gonna be registering for those again on March 15th. The first appointments will start on April 19th. Um, they're gonna run for basically all day, Monday through Friday. And again, we're gonna help you register for courses. I highly recommend that you register for the earliest available appointment that you are able to meet. Um, that's going to be the easiest way to make sure that you enroll in your courses and that you can relax for the rest of the summer knowing that you're enrolled at UCCS. Now, we have two more steps. These are completely optional. So step four, you can attend a webinar. Those are going to be happening in May, June, and August, and they're going to be sending out more information about those and registration links as we get closer to that. And then lastly, an optional step five that I didn't list here is we're going to be doing open houses on our campus where orientation is going to be organizing um, like tours and other ways to engage with the campus. More information coming on that um, shortly and as we approach that date, but you'll hear more communication about that here in just a little bit. 
One last note I'll make about orientation. Registering for orientation does not commit you to coming to UCCS. So if for whatever reason you decide not to come to UCCS, orientation is non-binding. We don't like to bind you to the decision before you know what you're getting into. So register for orientation, do it early. And if for whatever reason you can't make it to UCCS, no problem. You can always cancel your orientation or go somewhere else. Again, non-binding. With that being said, thank you so much for coming to the session today. I hope you learned more about engineering and UCCS in general and these short 15 minute sessions that we've had back to back. If you still have questions, we should be able to stay on for just a little more answering those, but feel free to email us at go at uccs.edu if you have questions. And more importantly, if they're really, really important questions, go ahead and submit them. I see some folks are raising their hand. Go ahead and type your questions into the Q&A. We'll be around for just a little bit longer. Okay, folks, so thank you all. If you don't have any questions, you're all clear to go. If you have questions, feel free to stick around for just a few more minutes. Hi, Eddie. Um, can you ask um, the, the question, um, Jane's question? Um, Sue is still on the call and she is more than happy to answer that one for us. Yeah, for sure. Sue, if you're still here, I have a question from a student named Jane. Um, Jane says she's going to be pursuing a bachelor's degree, but that Jane is unsure of which engineering degree is the best for her. If she wants to go into architectural or civil engineering for a master's down the line, is there a specific engineering degree that's a good idea for a bachelor's program? So this is a it depends kind of answer, which is why I wanted to answer this one. <laughs> so if you are very, very determined that you want to be a civil engineer, UCCS is not for you. And while we would love to have you here, you probably need a civil engineering undergrad degree. Uh, and it, it just matters in that field. So my husband is a civil engineer. He's a professional civil engineer. You would want to be looking at ABET accredited Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering. Um, that being said, you could, if you wanted to uh, do an undergraduate degree in mechanical engineering, um, but you would have some additional coursework and things to then get into civil engineering. It is not as clear of a pathway for you. So it's always easier in civil engineering to just start off in civil engineering. For architectural engineering though, you could definitely do a mechanical engineering undergrad and then deter and just go into the other one. Of course, you'd wanna check what the requirements are, but a Bachelor of Science should work for that. You're gonna to wanna to be looking with an eye towards your master's as you go through your undergrad to make sure that if there's any special requirements that you need to make that move from bachelor to grad school, especially in a particular school, that you have done your homework in advance and you're taking the right courses to make that the easiest transition as possible. That being said, for internships, there are a lot of internships in civil and in um, architectural that will say, if you have a mechanical engineering degree, you can do an internship with us, but when you're actually pursuing that as a job, especially in civil, you're going to need to have the requirements to work in that field. Hope that helps. Thank you, Sue, for the insight. Always appreciate it. And then I've I seen a couple. Yeah, oh, sorry. I'm just going to answer a question real quick. We got a question that was, how does one change their major from their original application decision? And I just want to let you know that on um, the orientation registration, you can indicate your major. What I would point out is that you do need to meet the academic criteria for the major that you want to be changed to. If you were admitted, um, say, for a mechanical engineering degree, then yes, you can certainly switch to electrical um, or any other degree in the College of Engineering. Um, but if you were admitted, um, say, into our College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences, um, then they would just reference to make sure you meet the criteria if for some reason you don't meet the criteria, you can still work towards a path to move into the College of Engineering and an academic advisor um, would help you with that plan. So when you register for orientation, just make sure you indicate there which major you're wanting to pursue. Awesome, thank you for that, Jacqueline. And yes, that is accurate, folks. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss this question. And I have a student, it looks like you've been taking some concurrent courses. 
yes, if you have updated transcripts, please send those in. If for whatever reason you don't have the most updated transcripts by the time that you're meeting with your academic advisor, they'll be able to take a look at them and sit down with you to determine how those courses might transfer to UCCS. So for now, send what you can. And if you can't send something else, you'll have a one-on-one -on -one with your academic advisor and they will help you with course registration based on what you've taken. So I hope that helps. And then Sue, if you're still around, one last question here that I think you'd be able to help us with. Um, could a mechanical engineering undergraduate degree lead to a master's in biomedical degree? Yes, it actually can lead to that. Um, you wanna always be aware of where you wanna take that biomedical degree in the future so that you have an eye out for whatever they're requiring because what you don't wanna have happen too much is that you get your undergrad in mechanical and then you wanna do biomedical and you have a gap. So what you usually want to do is to use those free electives to pick up uh, some of the bio uh, classes, if you can do that at UCCS so that you're prepared and then don't have to do any as much work when you're doing that master's degree. And then as a follow up from that, um, is a student who majors in an engineering related field, are they able to double major um, and choose a major from a different college at UCCS? Like, are they allowed to dip into letters, arts and sciences or business if they're already pursuing a major in engineering? They can, and you can even double major in engineering. Just know that uh, sometimes there are conflicts a little bit that you need to work on on yourself for uh, courses. So uh, it's not gonna always be the most perfect smooth path. <laughs> so it might add a little bit of time because you need to, for a double major in particular, sometimes you have to do a senior design thing and it takes a lot of time. And if you have to do that in two different colleges or for two different majors in engineering, it can just add some time. So sometimes it can add time to your level of effort and sometimes it can add time to like the length of time it takes to complete your degree. Thank you again, Sue, for all the help. I think that's all the time that we have for today. So I want to take another moment and thank you all for coming out and attending this event. I've seen a lot of questions wanting to rewatch this. We will be posting this on our YouTube and I believe you can find it archived on our Facebook as well since we are Facebook Live. So you can expect to see that in the coming days. If you look up UCCS Office of Admissions on Facebook or on YouTube, you'll find us and you can view this webinar as well as many others that we've posted so far. Thanks again for spending your afternoon with us. We hope you've enjoyed this and we hope to see you in future events. Thanks. Take care.